Show off your rig in style with the View 37 from Thermaltake. A large curved window offers a generous view of your components with included addressable RGB fans for a fully custom interior. Enjoy the freedom of full-sized hardware, high-end water cooling support, and dust-filtered ventilation for a system that performs as good as it looks. Click the link below to learn more. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today's project is actually gonna revolve around tackling a huge issue or a need uh, that we've been faced with for the last couple of months here on the channel. Um, you might notice that our image quality for, for our videos has gone up a notch, and that's because one of the reasons, uh, apart from Chris, who's holding the camera right now, is the camera itself, which is the Sony FS7. Beautiful camera, but it creates some seriously huge file sizes. One project now uh, that we create here in the studio can, can take anywhere from three to 600 gigs. Um, which is immense. So um, the other issue is that we have a couple different editors besides me now, me, Chris, and Wifey Sauce, and occasionally a project will have to trade hands. And when that happens, we, we either have to do some musical chairs magic where we all swap computers, or we have to spend a lot of time taking the files, putting them on an external drive, and moving them to a different computer. Um, it's, uh, it's been a huge burden lately. If you guys will come this way for a moment, you'll notice that we have our three workstations set up here. Let's take a look at one of them. Uh, this is the one that Chris usually works on. You can see that we've got a two terabyte hard drive that's just kind of for backup, and then we have two one terabyte SSDs that are already pretty much filled to the brim. Uh, and there's only maybe two to five projects in each of these drives, guys. So it's, it's clearly an issue. Uh, and even worse is that we don't currently have any good system worked out for redundancy. So if one of these drives goes, right now, we're kind of screwed and that data is completely lost. Um, it's, uh, it's freaking everyone out. Wifey Sauce has been under a lot of stress lately and she doesn't even do that much editing compared to Chris and I. I mean, I should give her the benefit of the doubt. She's one of the most hardworking people I've ever met personally. And I can't even imagine what I would do with Oh yeah, how do you like the truck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he does. We take 10 minute breaks every few hours. It's like a, a legal thing, so that's, that's what that is. But anyway, we have a serious need that needs serious tending to, and I have the perfect solution. Today I will be putting together a 10 gigabit storage server, which is a project unlike any other that I've ever taken on before. Um, and full disclaimer, I am a networking newbie. There's very little that I know about hardcore networking. There's still much for me to learn in this regard. And also a lot of the information that I share with you guys today will be heavily regurgitated from Wendell of Level One Techs, who was instrumental at helping me get this project up off the ground. So huge thanks to him. Um, he, he taught me so much in so little time uh, and also helped me source a lot of the hardware that you're about to see. So if you guys haven't checked out Level One Techs yet, I highly recommend it. There's some really great content on there. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of this hardware we're working with. For starters, we have 24 eight terabyte N300 Toshiba enterprise level hard drives. These things are good for 24 seven operation and it gives us a total of 192 terabytes to work with. Now, of course, we will be uh, putting this in RAID 10, which is RAID 1 plus 0, so we kind of get the best of both worlds in terms of redundancy and performance. Uh, so the on the redundancy side of things, that means we'll actually be halving the amount of usable data here, or usable storage, I should say. So that's really only, only 96 terabytes of workable storage, uh, but at least we'll be uh, safe in case of a drive failure or multiple drive failures. It also uh, gets us some speed performance by striping the, the, the drives together, meaning that we'll actually be able to saturate, hopefully at least with the read speeds, a one, uh, 10 gigabit per second connection, which is very exciting. These drives will be living inside of this disk shelf. This is an LSI SAS six gigabit per second disk shelf. We've got a redundant power supply. This is just gonna be so much easier, especially because we'll be, be connecting this um, to a host PC using just these two cables, which allows for just a very sexy configuration. I mean, imagine how many SATA cables you would actually have to wire up if you had them going to each individual drive. Uh, it, it would just be a madhouse. So this is a very clean uh, solution that I'm very excited to, to take advantage of today. Um, but let's talk about the host PC because this is just a disk shelf after all. There's no onboard processing here. So we need an actual computer 
in order to do all the heavy lifting. We'll actually be using the ZFS file system, which is known for being a very advanced and reliable file system. In that case, we're gonna be using FreeNAS, loading it up onto an SSD and booting up off of that. That's not in here yet, but we'll get around to that. This is the uh, Trooper SE first off from Cooler Master. Very nice case, tons of airflow. I'll probably be adding some more fans, especially to certain areas in the build that get uh, extra hot under these types of server storage, uh, storage server workloads. We wanted to go the economical route, so we went with Ryzen because um, it's got you know high core and thread count, uh, but also it supports things like ECC memory. Um, and so we've got the Ryzen 7 1700 in here. We haven't done any overclocking yet or anything like that. Not even sure if we're going to yet. The CPU is being cooled by an Arctic Freeze cooler with a 120 millimeter fan. I kind of took a chance on this cooler. Not sure if it's going to work out. We can always replace it later down the line. If not, uh, and we've got 64 gigs of Trident Z RGB RAM. Before you freak out, this is just temporary to get things up and running. We actually have a 128 gigabyte kit of uh, G no uh, Kingston unbuffered ECC memory on the way. So um, yeah. And then we also have our X370 motherboard, uh, the Tai Chi from ASRock, beautiful board and has a lot of connectivity, all the bells and whistles we could possibly need for this project. Right here, let's talk about what's populating our PCI Express slot, starting with the EVGA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. We're pretty much just gonna be using this to connect a monitor so that we can sort of uh, visualize and monitor uh, our system real time. And then we also have a uh, 10 gigabit ethernet card here. This is the Intel X540 T2 with dual RJ45 ports. We'll be connecting this to our 10 gigabit uh, 12 port switch. And finally down here, we have our LSI SAS 6 gigabit Gigabit per second controller, uh, which has uh, got eight channels to it. So there's two ports on the back, four channels on each port. And if you do the math, six gigabit per second, that gives us 48 gigabits of bandwidth coming out of this thing, which is absolutely crazy. One thing I ought to mention is that these SAS controllers are known to get extremely hot um, under load, but they won't actually notify you or warn you, at least this one doesn't, uh, when it gets too hot. So it'll just end up dying if you don't take care of it, uh, which is why I'm probably gonna have to MacGyver at some point a case fan that's aimed straight at this card for dedicated airflow so we don't run into any failures. Um, additionally, we have an Intel Optane 900P SSD. This thing's an absolute animal, 480 gigs. This is gonna be our cache drive. It's known for its incredibly high endurance. I mean, you can literally write dozens of petabytes to this thing before it becomes unreliable. And and uh, the read and write speeds are just through the roof. Some of the best write speeds on the market right now. And apart from that, we've got an 80 plus 650 watt G series power supply from Seasonic. But that's pretty much our rig, guys. This is our host PC that I cannot wait to get connected to this dish, disc shelf once we've populated it with all of these drives. So let's go ahead and do that now. And hopefully by the end of this little montage, I'll be able to show you guys this 10 gigabit storage server in action. Q epic music. All right, the NAS is finally up and running. Thank God. Oh, it's been such a long process. I should mention that uh, this today is like about three or four days after the rest of the video that you've already seen because we had a weekend in between and it messed everything up. But anyway, we're up and running, it's functional. There's still a lot of optimizing that we have to do to make sure everything's running the best it can, uh, but we're operational, so that's good. Right now, all of the drives are alive and well, knock on wood, that they stay that way for a long time. But Wendell did suggest that we hit the NAS hard with tons of file transfers, just to make sure that none of these drives are defective and, uh, and, and peter out in the first couple of weeks. So uh, maybe after about a week or two, um, if everything looks good, then we'll start using it for real. 
Steel. I should mention it's a little noisy in here because we, we do have a, a large blower fan, not the GPU kind. Um, aimed straight at our NIC, our 10 gigabit NIC, and the uh, the RAID controller. I thought this was an HBA. I actually ordered an HBA. They sent me a RAID controller instead. Didn't even realize it because I've never really worked with either of those things. And then I sent uh, Wendell a picture. And I was like, is this right? And he's like, that's a RAID card. That's actually like a $300 brand new RAID card. And I was like, well, I paid 80 bucks for it and it was supposed to be an HBA. Um, so we might we might actually do a little trade because I can still get everything up and running with this RAID card in here, but an HBA just makes a lot more sense for, for my needs. And I think Wendell just really, really wants my RAID card now. Everything else is looking good. Uh, there was a bit of a swap inside of the system. I don't know if you can tell from there, but the M.2 adapter that was connected to our Optane drive uh, that was initially in the bottom M.2 slot of our system had to move that up to the top slot because I completely forgot that it's sharing bandwidth with the bottom PCIe slot, uh, which is where our NIC is currently. So the NIC wasn't working initially, so I had to pop that M.2 card up a few notches and everything's working fine now. The blower fan might be a little overkill. It's kind of just what we had at the time, but I do have like a little USB fan that probably makes a lot more sense. We could actually put the side panel on and stuff. Getting back to the matter at hand though, I think it'd be really cool to show you guys a quick demo of this thing in action. So why don't we transfer over to the other room and I'll give you guys a gigabit of a taste of, uh, I, I, I'm done, let's go. Alrighty, here we are at the client PC. And uh, in the left window, we have our local storage. We're actually on a one terabyte NVMe SSD right now. I believe this is our RD400 from OCZ. Um, you can see we've got a couple projects in here. This is the test file we'll be using. It is 52.8 gigabytes. And, uh, and over here on the right, the window to the right, we actually have our, uh, our, our NAS. This is our NAS storage. You can see network, NAS, and I created a little data set or a folder, if you will, um, called test2. Um, there's already a file in here. I'm actually gonna be, it's the same one. I just renamed it. But let's go ahead and transfer this over and see what kind of speeds we're getting. Boom, and right off the bat, oh. We, we, we hit one gigabyte right right from the get-go and then we kind of dip down a little bit but we're still getting anywhere from eight to nine hundred megabytes a second Woo! look at that so we're transferring uh, about 50 almost 55 gigs here 53 gigs in under a minute guys and we'll be able to achieve these same types of transfer speeds uh, when, when we're you know transferring files between client systems as well because they'll, they'll all be connected to the 10 gigabit switch. 900 megabytes a second is pretty much right in between what you would get out of a SATA-based SSD and an NVMe SSD. So um, I, can, I can definitely live with that. And there we go. Sweet. Um, and if you guys want to see a little bit more action here, you can open up Premiere. Let me readjust the camera really quick. So this clip right here is actually the file I just transferred over to the NAS. So technically we're editing on our client PC, but the footage is stored on our server. So um, we're gonna go ahead and just test this out, see how smooth it is. This is a 4K file. Um, haven't done any like sort of color effects or anything like that, but we're, we're at full resolution, full 100% scaling. And I'm just gonna go ahead and play it, see if it's smooth. Looks pretty good. This is uh, clearly a shot of Chris and Wifey Sauce populating the disc shelf. They were being very helpful that day. All right, we can go to 2x here. 4x. Uh, it was choppy just for a split second, then it smoothed out pretty quickly. 8x. And uh, bear in mind, guys, I have not even set up the Optane caching yet. Optane SSD caching, uh, something that I'm gonna set up momentarily, but um, this is pretty promising so far, considering I haven't even messed around with that. What is this, 8X or 16X? At any rate, uh, I don't think I really edit at this speed very often, so um, this is more than enough performance, and it, it definitely feels like I'm editing off of local storage, which is exactly what we want. So altogether, I'm gonna call this one a big win. I'm gonna cut this video off now because I've been working on this for way too long. Um, this was a super challenging, yet equally, if not more so, fulfilling project. I, I, I have no regrets. I'm so glad that we're at the point we are now. 
um, and, uh, and we're not even done. We actually have, like I said, a lot more optimizing to do to get our workflow exactly the way we want it. Follow me on social media, at BitwitKyle, both on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be posting stuff about the server and just sort of the progress we're making behind the scenes that doesn't really warrant a full video or a part two. Uh, but if you want to catch all the, the BTS stuff, go ahead and follow me there. But that's all. That's all for now, guys. Toss a like on this video. Go ahead and ask me any questions down below. I'll try to get around to them. And get subscribed so you don't miss any more stuff coming to the channel very soon. You can also check us out on Floatplane if you want to watch our videos a week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link in the description below. Till next time, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this one. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.